Hey everybody, this is going to be my second video of my double upload today. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about the DD re uh, resigning. Now, in his first season with the, with the Philadelphia Phillies, he actually did not too. He did pretty good. He did pretty well in his first year with the with the Phillies. Uh, let's see. In 2020, he had. He had ten. He had he had for a two eighty four average with ten home runs, forty RBIs. He had sixty one hits with thirty four runs scored. Played in all sixty games. I mean, at the time it was a shortened, you know, pen a shortened season. And he had. I mean, he only walked fifteen times, but struck out twenty eight. So which, I think that needs to be addressed to a certain extent. But when he resigned, it was a two-year, $28 million deal, which his AAV, or average annual value, comes to around $14 million a year. Because after the 2022 season, which is his last season, who I think he's going to be like a temporary placeholder for when Bryson Stock comes up, which is one of the, the, the Phillies' uh, shortstop prospect. And then once he comes... And then... Didi will hit the free agent market, and hopefully the Phillies will call up uh, Bryson Stott to play short. So, if you like, uh, before I go any further, if you like the content that I'm putting out, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, comment this video, share this video, and you know, just help me grow as a small baseball content creator. Now, back to back to what I was saying. Um, Didi, and along with, in the, because with the Phillies, uh, with the lineup that the Phillies had last year, it was mostly right-handed heavy, only excluding Didi and Harper. You know, have, because I heard, when I, I got the notification from ESPN that Phillies are going to retain, uh, Didi for the next two seasons, which, for me, I was pretty pretty thrilled, or it was going to happen sooner or later, but I was not really expecting it to happen in the same week when the Phillies got when resigned re JT Romuto. As you can, as you can probably understand, you know what what the Phillies are going for. Like Don Brosky said, like he this is this is like the their retooling year, and see what how he's going to evaluate this season and probably what he can can do going forward. But like I mean I think having Didi for the for two for two more seasons, I think it could it does help, especially even though Harper's the only left handed bat in the lineup. So having him uh, in the lineup as well kind of will help with the with the right-handed heaviness in the lineup. And like I said, like, I think, you know, even though, like, even Didi asked for, like, for about, like, 15 million a year, which comes out to, like, about, th for two, he was looking for, like, a two, at least a two-year deal. Um, He asked, like, yeah, like I said, he had, tried to ask for, like, for, like, 15 million a year. And you know Philly's got him for like a million, a little bit cheap, almost around what he almost what he wanted. So he <clears throat> he like he took he took the deal, and by twenty twenty after twenty twenty two he'll be a free an unrestricted free agent in the twenty twenty three off season. Now, right, what are, what are the expectations of, of for Brian Bryson Stott? That I I can't even answer that question. I know with, like I said in my last video that I uploaded, I talked about the, with the, the Matt Moore signing and how that could benefit the Philly starting rotation going, maybe going forward, like for the next, say two or three seasons, see how that works. If he does well, I would hopefully, you know, would keep him for like a night for, not say for, not like say like, like another two or three seasons at best. If he can stay healthy, that's the main concern I ha I could probably think of for Matt Moore. 
But for for DD, like he can also bring you like like power from the especially that Citizens Bank part is a hitter is a hitter friendly ballpark to all fields, especially mostly for with uh yeah both down the line it's both it's very it's a short they're very short porches, and I think with DD, it's kind of almost like a not save it's almost kind of like the same dimensions that when he played with the Yankees. And um yeah, he took advantage of that short porch and right. I mean, he can give you at least let's say say 15 to 20 plus home runs in a single season. He's not like a like a 30 to 40 home run kind of guy, but I could say he can get near 30. But like I said, like both have keeping him and Romuto was a biggest priority for both the Phillies and the front office. Even it made the fans kind of made the fans happy, even myself included. <clears throat> so uh, let's. I mean, like the Matt and the, now going back to the Matt Moore signing. Um, I'm to be honest, as I'm surprised why we still have Velasquez. Well, I think Velasquez, if he can get his stuff right, I think he could be a really good reliever out of the bullpen. Because I don't think I kind of lost faith in him as a as a starting pitcher. But if you look at the big picture, because you got you got your th- your top three, you got Nola, Wheeler, and Eflin for your top three. Now with and then Spencer, like I said, you could either have I like I said in my last video, you can have slide in either more in the four spot, or you put Howard in the four, or you can move Matt Moore to the five spot in the back end of the rotation. I mean, like like I said, like he had some he had success in Nepal professional baseball for the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks, you know and. And I, like I said, like, you know, that, you know, we kind of, like, Matt Moore, to me, I think it's, a like I said, it's a low risk, high reward for Matt Moore. Because if it, because I'm really hoping he succeed, has a, you know, replicate what he had in his rookie year for the Tampa Bay Rays. <clears throat> I'm a, you know, having, being a rookie, especially, have it even though being ninth in the Cy Young voting race, kind of. I mean, like he only. I mean, he had some decent seasons after that, but just like, I think he kind of just you know went off the rails a little bit. And same with Didi. Like Didi, before he came to the Phillies, had to had to had to rehab from Tommy John surgery, which for me, like as as a baseball, as much as one person that loves baseball, like it's weird to see fielders getting. Tommy John, because I remember that's the only thing I can remember. Only that always the only known for pitchers, but I, I guess I was I was I was proved wrong. So once Didi got fully during this when he got returned to the Yankees, I don't think he was kind of the same from what he was, despite the fact he was rehabbing it a lot longer than most most people. Who who recovered from John, Tommy John, and now it's going to be now it's going to be like when Reese Hoskins. Now, if you're a Phillies fan, you'll understand Hoskins might struggle a little bit because he's still kind of. I mean, though he's I know he's still rehabbing it, the, his injury from what he, the Tommy again Tommy John. But I think in the long and like long term. For this organization, I would, I say, give them like say two at best. Right now, we're a wild card team, and I'm just I admit that. But I think given like I say two to five seasons at best, I think we could. Comp- I mean, we're in like the, one of the toughest divisions in baseball. Now, the only team, I mean, obviously Atlanta is going to be the tough team to beat. I know the. Nationals are not going to be as good as they once were, despite the fact after winning the World Series. The other team I think that can have, you know, give the Phillies a little bit of problems is the Mets. Now, as 
I hate the match as much as as the next person. Especially like 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 a guy like Chase Utley who really despises the the Mets. But that's a that's another that's another video for another day. But going back to you know bringing back Didi, I think that can really help with the Bryce with Bryson Stott's development when he comes up. You know, you know if he can get like at least part at least some service MLB service time. I think after DD leaves, I think he could probably be the starter for the for the Phillies at shortstop. Now, the other issue I haven't really discussed was the center field issue, which I know that's been kind of a topic. I think most, uh, you know, cr baseball careers are have been. Well, I'm not saying about the Phillies, but that's kind of what, other than pitching, it's center center field is kind of their big issue. Like, because the only guys you have out there are is Roman Quinn and Adam Hazley. Roman Quinn, I like him, but he just cannot hit hit for worth a damn. Let's let's put. I'm going to be honest. But with hate, the only thing that separates him from Hazley is the speed tool. And then Ro Roman Quinn can fly. Like, if you need him as a pinch runner, I mean, he's a perfect situation to use him as a pinch runner. Like, say, for example, if the game is on the line. Because he would, I, I mean, he has, like, excellent base. And then, yeah, like I said, he can ha he can absolutely fly with the, with the speed tool that he has. Now, Hazley, on the other hand, is kind of, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it per se, because it's like he can, he's a good, def he's an above average defender from what I saw. Like if he can take his, if he can take his game up to the next level, I think sometime in his career, he can be a gold glove uh, kind of center fielder. Even though the hit, the hitting is kind of, is going to be like his kind of as like his weak league spot. But I think if Joe Dillon can help figure out, especially both, you know, hitting wise, especially both Quinn and Adam Hazley, I think they could be really decent hitters. Not say like a, like a hitter like Bryce Harper or Dee Dee or, or God, like JT, like, you know, at least, at least try to put the ball in place instead of just looking or just, just looking confused at the plate. But, with that being said, I hope I thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you like, like I said, if you like, please like this video, share this video, comment on this video, and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more uh, baseball content. And I think Wednesday I'm going to try to do a live stream. If you want to, want to, I mean, by all means, you everyone has joined to join join the live stream, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.